Rosendahl. Joining me are Paul Koretz, Bernard Parks, Tom Labange, and Jose Weiser. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the committee meeting on December the 12th, 2012. 12, 12, 12. What item is it? That's 12, 21, but it is an interesting number, isn't it? Okay. Agenda. Order of agenda. Regular agenda. Item number one. Item number one is a DOT report relative to submitting grant applications for the projects recommended by the Interdepartmental, Interdepartmental Task Force Committee to the uh, to Metro for the 2013 Call for Projects grant cycle. Okay, could we have a, a quick report on where we're at right now, please? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Arsene Mangus here from the Department of Transportation. Yes. I'm the program manager for Call for Projects for the city. The report in front of you um, is a request from General Manager of the Department of Transportation to authorize the department to submit grant applications for the projects that are submitted um, in the attachments to your, to your report. Uh, there were two technical revisions. I think there were just errors that um, I would be glad to walk you through. Just tell us what it is real quickly. Uh, the, one of the projects in the um, RSTI category was, the title was um, printed wrong, so it, it changed, we changed it to the right title. That's the Slauson project. Okay. The boundaries changed, so that was like a technical okay. change. We'd like to approve it as amended. Do we have a second for that? Mr. Second. Okay. I'm sorry, this is item number one? This is good. Uh, yes, I've, this is I've item got, one. Uh, so I'd like to... Uh, uh, ask that um, the items have been selected for submission you have them from item number one to five correct what page are you on on the yeah I'm sorry let me get I didn't know we we're gonna go this quick um, on the T the T items the um, page five I'm sorry I think it's page 13. The transportation enhancement activities category. Estimated funding is $4 million to $10 million for the county. Right. You got that? Yes. Yeah. You are submitting uh, those five items, and then there's a cutoff after that for others who put on. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, is it possible to make the cutoff at number seven and just get a few more projects in that mix uh, as possibilities to be funded? You have a um, problem with that? No. Well, yeah, no it's, has it's arbitrary, been. right? Whether you stop at five, six, right. or six, it's arbitrary. So if we could start at seven, stop at, include six and seven. I'd like to make that motion, Mr. Chair, just to. So moved. Okay. Second? Second. Second. Okay, in favor? Wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I have a couple of questions. Oh, it's Mr. Um, Mr. Weezer, which projects were those? Because I, I think I. It's on page 13 of the handout that's on, in front of you. So I wanted to add back a couple as well that may be the same ones. So. Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. And if we move it from five to seven, okay. number six is Pico Green Street. And um, number seven is the Transit Connection Bridge Pedestrian Access Hope Street to Upper Grand. And you have uh, no problem with that? No, sir. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I have, uh, I'd actually like to add two additionally as well. Um, I'd like to move, uh, and I can't read well. I have bad glasses that I need to get replaced very quickly. So I'm using some from 30 years ago. Uh, a move RSTI project number 12 in CD6, Brantford Street widening for goods movement, and move that above the line uh, with the local match coming from CD6. Uh, I'd like to move PI project 16. Uh, in CD5, Exposition Light Railway Greenway Improvement Project above the line for uh, the PI1 category. And uh, based on the fact that although there was some outreach, um, there are concerns in what is now my district, but was CD12 with the uh, Oxnard Street widening um, White Oak to Lindley. Uh, I'd like to remove that from the list. So it's Probably in terms of the proposed cost, it's it's uh, it's a wash anyway. Um, so I'd like to move those two items and remove the one item uh, on the Oxnard Street widening. Uh, have the opportunity for community input and perhaps uh, 
the next go around in a couple of years, uh, we'll ask to put that back on. No problem with that. Uh, moving the project above the line, um, I have, DOT has no objection to that, council member, but m removing an Oxnard project from the list, I'd just like to speak on behalf of that project if you would like to. Sure. Uh, that, that, that project has been uh, submitted in the past, call for projects, two rounds, and um, scored very well in the last call, it's just uh, below the line. It's, it's a major secondary highway, Oxnard, and uh, the project, as an RSTI project, it's a, it's a good project. That's all I have to say. But if the prerogative of this, this members are to move the project out of that this type. Now, if it, uh, if it does get funded, we're not obligated to Absolutely. go forward and expend it. None of these projects that we're submitting to Metro, if, in case they get funded, or that we're not obligated to, to deliver the project. No, we can always uh, relinquish the project back to Metro and deobligate the funds. Or, or we can put it on hold to uh, put it on hold. So I think there's one project like that uh, that we were dealing with in, in Century City on a completely different topic um, that we put on hold to uh, try and work things out with with the neighborhood. Um, but all right, I, I, I'm willing to uh, alter my amendment, leave the the white oak on, um, but if we could put those other two items uh, above the line, uh, that would be appreciated. No objection. Fine. Okay. So that, that is the motion as amended? Yes, Mr. Clark. On request on 13, 813, where we moved it to 7. Yep. If we could just eke out to number 8. Uh, that's one that has, a, I understand, some uh, Bureau of uh, uh, Funding that may be based on that. <coughs> that's something we've been waiting for in the Vermont strong order. Uh, I'm sorry, which, I'm sorry, I didn't number eight. Number 8 on the pedestrian improvement? Number eight on the pedestrian. We have a new storm order. On T projects. Yeah, T. Just, right. just go down and include one more project. One more project, yeah. yeah. Four weeks. Went to seven. If you just go to eight, we'd appreciate it. Okay, at this point, there is a public comment card. Do we have a, are we completed? Uh, um, I have my hand up, but whenever you want. Oh, I'm sorry, no, go for it. Color. Please, Tommy. Just a couple of things. Uh, yes. How long have we been doing this? How long I have been doing this? Yeah, I know. You or the department? Oh, the department, yeah. 20, 20 some years. And then, uh, how many uh, how many projects do you think are listed on here right now? How many projects are yeah. listed for funding? Fifty six. Fifty six. And of the fifty six, how many do you think will get funded? Uh, our our uh, success rate is about forty to fifty percent. Forty percent. Do you have a report? And how long have we been having these uh, metro call for projects? How many years? Since nineteen uh, ninety two or something. Ninety two. Yes. Okay. Do we have a report that shows our success since ninety two? What has Absolutely. been funded? Absolutely. Could you provide that for the committee? Because I think it would be good to look yes. at what has yes. done. And then also, do you have a report? I don't know if the Department of Transportation still does this, but there are certain streets that carry traffic. And I want to protect those streets that carry traffic. I'm a, a village guy. I, you know, I understand that. But at the same time, I don't want to see us turn every street into a village street because we still have traffic. We have to have manageable traffic congestion. I think that's the key there. Do you have streets like a map? See, this is 1117 that shows Sherman Way or uh, Victory Boulevard or... In Ventura, Boulevard's a little bit of a village street, but around the interchanges you add to it, Olympic Boulevard, some of these streets that are going to be streets that carry traffic. And also, uh, do you have a, something that shows that? Because I, I, I want to make sure we preserve. I see Pauline Chan, who's been the excellent one for traffic calming in neighborhoods historically in your department, along with Mr. Gallagher, but Pauline has been a superstar in that. Brian's a superstar in many things as well. But at the same time, what tells us is going to protect the roadways that carry buses, that carry uh, goods movements and vehicles, and also what is the parallel streets that would be appropriate for uh, villaging in the street or bikeways, etc.? So, you want to answer that question? Yeah. Ken Husting, LADOT. Actually, we're working very closely with planning right now with the revision of the mobility element to specifically identify what streets are going to remain high flow arterials and which ones should be actually be designated more for transit or something for more pedestrian related. So right. we're going through that exercise right now. We do have some uh, documents that show high flow arterials, but really that's going to be changing just because the, the city has been changing. But, but yeah, but you've got to state it though. Because I don't want to wake up and see the street restriped, 
and without having some discussion, because sometimes the people who, uh, if you're an elected official, you're an expert. You know that, correct? Okay, so we're all experts up here. All right, you got that. Born but our deputies were an expert. No, I don't think so. We've got to work for it. But anyway, our deputies are experts, and there's people in the neighborhood are experts. You've transformed uh, right by, and I don't know if you thought about this, but right by, and thank you for the extra time, Mr. Rosendahl. Sure. Uh, the Bureau of Street Lighting has a yard at Santa Monica and Virgil. And you transform that street to now eastbound Santa Monica Boulevard, that you have a, a right turn only, and then you have a bike lane that goes up to Sunset mm -hmm. and Santa Monica Boulevard, and you only have one lane in each direction, so the queue is longer. Then you have city trucks that have to jump over what is a, a one lane into the only through lane. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. And then also, if you're the, and that's a, uh, a rapid bus street. And that's a long bus, that rapid bus, and that driver has to go from the curb through a bike lane, through a no-person zone, through the only through lane. Have you met with MTA to de go in that detail of what it means to the driver looking to make safe passage? I cannot say for certain that we've actually met with Metro. Got it, but, but I want you to do that. That's all. Safety is so important. Uh, mobility is important. And to look at all these things. I understand that we're trying to you do some things, but I think you want to preserve streets because what happens is when we cut all the mobility on the big streets, then they go into the neighborhoods, and there's a, not enough Pauline chance to protect the neighborhoods. <laughs> so thank you. I look for the report, and if you could give us your success, I think that would be good to see. Because, Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, there used to be a book they put out every year called the Capital Improvement Book. Yes. They don't do that anymore. No. But I think it's good to see what our goals are and what is it helps us give us a guide point. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, I will agree with this. Uh, yes. Um, oh, last question, though. On last page, I forgot. The zoo traffic signal. $500,000 for a traffic signal? Uh, the estimates came because, because of other issues, Council Member. That project is not in the list here. Because, but it's on the page there. Uh, but it did not get... Um, but it's, uh, I got hope, you know. Uh, it's on the page there, the last page. Uh, let me work with you on that. Yes. And uh, see what, but $500,000 is a lot for a traffic signal. And I know I uh, fought to keep the elephants in the zoo, but they're not going to go out on Zoo Drive, though, Paul. They're, uh, they're free to roam their area in the zoo. So I want to make sure we're not spending too much. Please, let's work on that. We'll have a sidebar on that one. Thank you very much. It's a good point. You, if they... Mr. Chairman, can I finish my technical revisions? You know, I, I, I started with one and I yeah. didn't yeah. finish. There is another technical revision, just for the record. So this is record is straight. There's, there was a project uh, that um, um, on Santa Monica Boulevard, uh, we, we believe the location of the improvement was part of the um, area that Caltrans controls. It was a state highway. Then later on, we found out that it's not uh, Caltrans control, is, it has been relinquished to the city, so we just added that project back into the list. That's the Lonnie project, uh, Santa Monica. Very good. So okay, that, those are the two that. changes that we made, and it's different from the original report that we had submitted to you. Okay, fine. Now, I'd like the two of you to stay there, and I'm going to have public comment on this. And like, could I have Glenn Bailey come on up and Emily Williams? Emily Williams, of course, is from the office of Council Member Tony Cardenas. Are you here? Emily Williams? Where's Emily Williams? Okay, um, we'll start with Emily Williams and then we'll go right to you. Okay. And then also, um, I will open up public comment in general. You can have their two minutes at that point as well. Go for it. Thank you. Emily Williams, representing Councilmember Tony Cardenas, um, commenting on something. Thank you very much, Councilmember Coretz, for bringing up the Branford Street Widening Project. Just wanted to um, advocate for adding this um, to the list of submissions for the call. I've already been in contact with Arson and the Department of Transportation, and they are in support. Um, the reason is that um, it was not ranked above the line because there is an absence of a bus route, which eliminates the opportunity to seek matching funds from the city's Proposition C local return funds. However, the new FedEx facility that will be opening up just a few blocks away in 2013 will result in a significant increase in traffic, specifically truck traffic. So I will leave it up to the technical expertise of the Department of Transportation to decide whether or not to place it under the goods management um, or goods movement improvements category, which is currently undersubscribed, or to keep it under RSTI. Very good. Your Thank comment? You. Yes, we would like to move that project to the goods movement uh, for two basic reasons. Um, Goods movement category is undersubscribed, so there's more money 
for us to capture. So that's that would be and also um, according to their estimates, you know, there's going to be the UPS there is going to have a heavy truck uh, um, traffic on that on that route. So we would like to move it from RSDI to Goods Movement category. Very good, very good. Uh, now, Glenn Bailey, uh, you can use three minutes. Say what you want, and then I'll open up public comment after we take the vote on this. Uh, and you can come. Well, you can come back either way you want to do it. Go okay. for it. So I am going to speak right now on this item one regarding the uh, Metro call for projects. Um, first of all, uh, I am the Area 1 representative on the Encino Neighborhood Council, and I represent the entire area that's included with one of the projects. It's number six. It's Oxnard Street that Councilmember Coretz referred to earlier between Lindley Avenue and White Oak Avenue. Um, in my Area 1, there's about 7,000 people uh, in my area. Um, I also happen to be the new president of the Encino Neighborhood Council. However, we just became aware of this project, and so we have not had an opportunity to agendize it nor take a position on it. So my comments are strictly right, right now my own. I did check with the prior uh, immediate past president, uh, Louis Krokover, who said in, in, in his tenure he had never been aware of this project uh, being proposed or discussed. And I, I just heard today it was actually in a consideration in past years. This is the first that we've heard in the last few days. I also checked with Lori Kelson, who is heading our Traffic and Transportation Committee over the last several years, and she had never heard of the project being in the consideration. So this um, stretch of Oxnard um, dead ends just east of Louise, and it dead ends into Victory Boulevard. So of that stretch, only one mile is fully widened, uh, and it's the half mile on either side of Reseda Boulevard. Um, during the discussion of the Orange Line um, busway, this was never brought up as being one of the considerations for doing that. And quite to the contrary, they've now fully landscaped this area that's proposed to be removed. A half a mile stretch of landscape in the orange line would be removed and put under asphalt. That's the most unenvironmental thing and the most terrible thing for our community who don't have parks in our direct area of our community. And of course, it would take away from the experience on the bicycling and the walk path that runs along this stretch. Oxnard Street is almost a highway to nowhere because it does dead end. Now there is a connection obviously uh, you know, at either end on this particular stretch, but frankly I don't believe and the outreach I've been able to do in the limited time I've had is that the thing that people really want are to put in curbs and gutters. This street has been in place for over 50 years. There are no curbs or gutters or sidewalks on the south side of the street, but I don't think we should just we should um, impact negatively the residents, it's a residential area, and the beautiful parkway of the Orange Line busway for the sake of moving more and more cars through, through the residential area just to get curbs and gutters. And I know that wasn't the intent. The intention was to put in a four-lane four -lane highway there. Um, also, traffic calming is important. There is a crosswalk that serves the local elementary schools it halfway through this stretch that serves the north half. They have to cross the orange line. They have to cross the street. When you expand from two lanes to four lanes, it inherently makes crosswalks more dangerous because one car may stop, the other one may not. Um, and 5,444,000 seems like an awful lot of money for very limited benefit and a lot of negative impact. Um, so that's my comment on item number one. Okay, do you want to respond? Um, actually, it sounds like a, a somewhat compelling issue in that uh, I suspect, based on what uh, Mr. Bailey has said, there's a reasonable chance if this was funded, we would probably put it on hold anyway um, because of the negative impacts uh, on the community. So I'm going to ask that we pull this. I mean that. If we think there's a good chance it'll get funded and then we won't implement it, I think uh, we're, we're unnecessarily competing with better projects that we, we are more likely to implement. Um, I'd rather put this on a, on a hold and bring it back two years from now after we've really had a good chance to look at it. Uh, and you bring some serious concerns and we as a council office has not, haven't really had a chance to vet any of those concerns. So. Uh, I'm going to ask that we pull that. I'll second it. All those in favor of pulling it? Aye. Aye. What did Mr. Gardner's want? It's no. in court, Mr. Gardner. That's only my district. Yes, but he used to have it, right? 
No, no, that was uh, CD12. Okay, so I have a, a first and a second, and it seems like the majority is in favor of putting that on hold. And we look to your leadership, Mr. Koretz, and working with Mr. Bailey on that. Thank you very much. And I pledge Thank that you. I'll do all that I can with the neighborhood council to have a robust uh, outreach and just in cooperation with your with your office. I appreciate that. Yes, congratulations. Condolences, but thank you. Okay, everybody and we're looking forward to working with you on that, is, that and many other issues. Comment. I'm going to open up public comment. Uh, anybody else have anything else to say with that amendment? We're going to go forward. Okay, so ordered. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, can I just go through what we're, make sure we got all the projects on here. You're going to be approving the uh, proposed list as amended for the technical changes, and then we will uh, lower the line in the T category to include the Pico um, Green Street, the Transit Connection Bridge, and the Vermont Avenue stormwater projects. For RSTI, we'll move the Branford Street widening to the goods movement category, and under um, Gesture improvement, we will move the Greenway project in CD5 above the line. And then lastly, we'll delete the Oxnard project under the RSTI category. Sounds good. Okay. okay. We're all in favor of that. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Mr. Free Bailey, do you want to stay up again for two minutes of public comment? Or do we resolve it all for you? Uh, you you've gone a long way. Thank you very much. Um, but having been through this experience, I would like to Let me to just say this is public comment. If there's anybody else in the room who wants to do just public comment, now's the time to come up. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, um, Chairman Rosendahl, and thank you, Mr. Koretz, for uh, listening to the concerns of the community. Um, I just want to make a suggestion on this, since it comes up every two years, and I realize there's limited staff, that, but that's what, why there are 95 neighborhood councils in this city, is if staff would send out the list a month ahead of time, we could then uh, assist in the in the outreach efforts. I'm sure mo many of these projects the neighbor councils would support, but part of the battle is pe people being aware of them and being involved in the process. Feel like they're being aware in the process. So I know there's staff limitations. We we're volunteers. We have limitations as well. But let's utilize the neighborhood council system to help the city, so that we have projects that there's awareness of, that there's support of. And if there's tweaking or suggestions, or maybe there's a project that people are just, it's the best project in the world, and, and you've got a thousand letters, people saying, we really want this, that might help you. I don't know. But this way, it's honestly not working. And, um, but I, I will re we'll redouble our efforts to pay more close attention. But, you know, this is a big city. And um, so there's 15 of you, 95 neighborhood councils. Let's try to... See if we can do something. Speaking to the choir, I believe in neighborhood councils, and I support all of my neighborhood councils, even those that aren't affiliated with the city, who want to be able to sue and think the Brown Act is dumb. Uh, but I support them because people are involved in their community and care about it. The oldest neighborhood council is in the Palisades. It's 38 years old. There's no complaints from these people the way they do it. Brentwood is the other one. But the reality is all eight are get my support because they're people putting out time and energy and it is a grassroots part of democracy. Last thing I also want to say about neighborhood council, I just want people who live in the area, I think the Charter Amendment in 99 was wrong, saying work in the area or own property in the area, that's ridiculous. So, and I've been strong in that position since day one, and I also believe all neighborhood council people should do ethics training or they should be thrown off because they all vote on various projects and situations as a backdrop. So you're preaching to the choir here, and of course to Mr. Koretz too. When he heard what you and I just heard, I passed on your, your uh, inquiry to me this morning uh, to him so that he could at least be aware of it. And obviously his amended suggestion we unanimously agree. Uh, I thank you and my best wishes to your, uh, your help. Thank you. Mr. Rosendahl? Yes. I just request the CLA to formally request the department, they come up with a biannual neighborhood by region. You know, at the Van Nuys City Hall, for the Van Nuys uh, Municipal Building, that they have a valley outreach on these programs at the Hollywood City Hall for Hollywood Wilshire, here at the City Hall, whatever it is it takes. But I know the departments want to do that, and it's all sometimes conflicting. But let's get it on the schedule so we don't have this situation. Would you? Per, uh, Give a directive, maybe draft a letter for the chair. So moved. Yeah. Would you second it, Mr. Lepage? I, I think I, uh, I think I motioned it, but uh, I'll take the second. <laughs> okay. And then uh, whatever it is, you know how it goes. Okay, it's fine. No. All right. We got uh, the point. And everybody's in favor of that strategy. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Any, now this is again public comment. Is there anybody else in the room to speak on public comment? 
Hearing nobody else, public comment is closed. Thank you. Okay, so uh, would you tell us exactly what we just voted on? Uh, for item number one? Yes. That was approving as amended the, um, the revised project list. What? I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. With, with the, the changes that I outlined earlier in terms of the projects that we're adding and deleting. Okay. So be it. We're moving forward with that, and we're now closing public comment um, <coughs> with that action taken by the committee. Item number two. Item number two is a Wezark Krikorian motion instructing DOT in coordination with the CAO and CLA to report relative to funding mechanisms and options for the 30-year operational plan for the downtown LA streetcar system. I bet you could do both. I bet you could. That is One item number two. There was a bit of a mumble there. Okay. And the recommendation is to approve this, correct? What's two? All those in favor of approving it? Mr. Chair, um, if I Please. could just state that, uh, first I want to thank DOT staff for the work you've been doing on this. A lot of time and effort has gone into brainstorming as to what the possibilities are for operating the streetcar. And as we all know, all public transit systems are supported one way or another. And this is just a report back to get back on what we can do. Um, and. Uh, but this is no way a gimme. Like any other public transportation system, it provides benefits. Uh, the streetcar, as we know, is going to provide economic development benefits. There was an AECOM study that said that there would be at least $2 billion or an additional investment in downtown LA with the streetcar. Um, uh, and without it, that development wouldn't occur. Uh, there's new revenues to our city coffers. Uh, there's new and additional um, tourist spending should the streetcar come through. So I look forward to getting this back. And can we get this back in January? Um, we spoke with your staff earlier today. We, we can shoot for the second meeting in January, the, I think the 23rd meeting. Uh, we had our first meeting with the CLA and CAO and reviewed some of the key issues. Um, there are a number that we need to tackle in preparation of the report, and the holidays are going to make it a little bit more difficult to coordinate. But We'll, we'll shoot for the 23rd and, and hope to get the report in for that meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations on getting the local people Thank along. That, after Thank Mr. Park. Mr. Park. Yes. You know, one thing I just would like to make sure is you're looking at sources. As you know, we went through such uh, several years of A and C being overloaded with operational expenses, and we had to cut so much uh, bus service so that the, the wider net that you cast to see where funding, because that's a big hit, uh, $6 million a year on any one of those funds, or even if you uh, basically merge some of the money from different funds and, and measure R being the least amount of money on the local return, we've kind of made a commitment a while back of not turning that into an operational fund, but more of a logistical fund. So I would just ask you if we're going to be looking at this $6 million a year, that we look at uh, grants or federal or state and a lot of things other than these funds that are already uh, basically uh, pretty well uh, exhausted. They are. I think um, there are some funds that m may be more feasible, but I think there's no pot of funding that has been left aside that it's not at least been thought of in terms of potential priorities to move forward on. So it, it's going to involve uh, prioritization in terms of what you want to move forward on, and, and some just tough decisions are going to be made. But we'll certainly look at alternative funding sources like yeah, advertising like we do for our, our bus system. Um, the, the grant that we're going after from FTA would cover half of the construction, design construction cost, and the tax that was just approved will be the city's local match, so it'll be a 50-50 split, 62.5 million from FTA, 62.5 million from the tax. The, as you mentioned, the ongoing operations is about $6 million a year in current costs. With Fairbox, it's about $5 million a year net. Um, so we'll, we'll certainly try to look as many options as possible, yeah. but it's, it's going to involve potentially some tough choices to be yeah. made. Do we have the ability, if that development comes about, that, uh, that some of that development could be earmarked for that system? Uh, what we would be bringing forward to the council would be for the FTA ap application. We, we need to be able to show an existing funding source that is available to be used to fund the project for uh, 
actually 20 years, but for, uh, per council direction, because the bond is for a 30-year period, that would be for a 30-year forecast. Um, we have the ability, after the fact, if we do implement the project, that we can, we don't have to stick to that plan. We, we could decide we want to use another fund instead. But, but for the purposes of the application, we need to be able to show that we have the funding in hand with an existing funding source. I don't think we could use estimated potential new revenues coming in that aren't in the hands of the city today. But certainly, we could use those funds in the future if they do come in. But I mean, we could basically uh, supplement in the sense if you use these up front as development comes in, you yes. could, just like we have in variety of parts of the city to have transportation mitigation dollars as part of the development fees. You certainly can use those funds yeah, as we move forward, yes. Okay, and I consider that a friendly amendment, unless there's some op opposition to that. Well, if they're going to come back with a report, I think we can sure. look at all this as a right. whole when it comes back. Right. Um, but if to, to kind of pigeonhole us into one uh, item right now, I think that that's an item they will research and come back on. Yeah, and you'll come back to us, but uh, I recommend approval of that and consider it a friendly amendment. Uh, please, Mr. Would you, for the public and everyone here, what is the route? The route um, is a 3.8 mile route that is clockwise. It runs uphill first down uh, Broadway um, to 12th and then up Figueroa, and then it'll come over either on 7th Street, which is the LPA, or 9th is, is another alternative for looking in the environmental process. Let's just go if it goes from Hill and First down Broadway, mm -hmm. and then it goes. West. West on 12th, I believe. On 12th Street. We'll, we'll include a map with a report. Um, 11th Street, I'm sorry. Uh, it travels from Broadway to Fig using 11th, and then up Fig to 7th, and then east on 7th to uh, Hill, and then up Hill to 1st. As uh, Mr. Weizar knows, uh, my support for this, but also to make sure that you know in other parts of the world where they're very rapid on uh, this type of uh, street system, streetcar system, that in Bordeaux, France, which is a sister city, they have, and I want to say a power tape as opposed to an overhead wire that pulls it through the historic core. And you have the historic core of Broadway, which I think may solve some of those problems because they pull the power out of it. Make sure that you're looking at that, that technology which <coughs> is available. And uh, the mayor of Bordeaux did six lines, in the, and it was very tough. But once they got done, it was accepted greatly by the community on that. But in the end, the historic <laughs> core, they do that. And uh, what? How many? How many? How much? How many trains do you envision? I just wanted to know that. Like, if there's a train at first in Broadway, would there be? Would they ever? You know, streetcars used to go bumper to bumper. Would they be that rapid of service? We're looking at a maximum of six trolley cars in peak operation and running basically every seven minutes and uh, to 15 minutes off peak. So maximum six cars, minimum of four cars. Would it be any coupled together? I don't believe they're coupled together. And would they be at the at almost at street level? So yeah. for ADA reasons? Yeah, they'll, they'll come up to the curb. So they'll be flat, uh, low floor board. And would they be adjacent to a curb or would they be uh, in the center of the street? Adjacent to the curb. All right, okay, so there's a lot of engineering that you've got to work Although on. There will be some bump outs. Uh, and got it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you, you're welcome. Uh, all those in favor of the amended motion, uh, everybody agrees with, signify by saying aye. 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 Those you. opposed? It's unanimous on that. Uh, item number three is Cardenas Rosendahl. Uh, it's being suggested that we continue this motion and instruct the Department of Transportation to report back on parking utilization and alternatives to better manage parking. Uh, I obviously second it as a friendly second, uh, but if the uh, uh, councilman, congressman soon to be's office want to comment on that, we'd like to continue this item. Uh, and instruct the Department of Transportation to report back on the parking utilization. Good idea. Okay. It's a good idea, he says. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. It is approved. Uh, the next item is item number four. Weezar Rosendahl instructing DOT to report relatively to the steps necessary to implement a program to reuse old parking meters as homeless donation meters to downtown Los Angeles. Uh, did I say it right? Uh, yes. No. Yes. Uh, we're asking for approval on this. Does anybody have any opposition to that? 
I have some uh, comments, Mr. Chair. Please. Okay, and colleagues, this uh, really was a no-brainer in helping the homeless uh, community in an innovative way. And um, in the report back, to detail the possible structures, um, there's somebody here from staff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, we could also look at what are the options for distributing the money uh, once we get it. And the pros and cons of keeping the money within a certain geographic area where the money's collected or if we put it all into and how we would get it out to wherever it goes if we just put it in one big area and then distribute it or we keep it where the money was gotten from. And, um, and uh, that's about it. I think Denver has shown some very positive results with this. Um, there's a lot of businesses interested in downtown to work with the city and make this possible. So I look forward to get this report back. Okay, with that, uh, well, just a question: How much money can a meter hold? A meter can hold between thirty-five and sixty dollars. Right. Dan Mitchell, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Dan. And then also, uh, if it's broken, will you still give service to the people? No, I'm teasing. <laughs> The question I wanted to know is, I think, Mr. Weasel, this is a great idea. I had to kick it around here implementing it. I think maybe we use uh, swipe cards, too. I was at the market this morning. The, the clerk asked me, would you like to give a, a buck, two bucks, five bucks to a cause, and then they just swipe it in. That would maybe be something if there was, and I, I, I would just say uh, there should be another word than homelessness. I just believe it should be for, for community causes or, or, or think of it. I think we should... They have the CLA come up with an idea. Uh, item one could be for youth sports or the or you know the police athletic league. I don't know. There would be choices. I think there's a menu you could put out there and have a success and try to do it. I'm very involved with the Salvation Army. They're the bell ringers. They're going on right now. There's they do that. But at the same time, I think we should look at this. But I don't think it should be just safe for uh, homelessness. I think it should be for causes that are. For humanitarian causes, for the city. I'm with the word changes. Anybody ever? I don't know the word, but I think we should kick it around because we should market this in such a way. I think it's a good thing, Mr. Rosen. I'd like to see some of these at the zoo. For going right back into the zoo for care for the animals, but so I, I don't want to limit it only to broken old meters, but something that would it's something to work at. And do you know, Mr. Weezer spoke of Denver. Do you know you go to international national conferences on? Uh, on parking meter heads and other things. Do you have any, what's in your industry? Have you heard about this? Uh, yes, sir. In, in Denver, they have their older meters that they've uh, repurposed right. for accepting uh, donations for the homeless. In their city, I think that was part of a program to also implement some anti-panhandling legislation. Right. Um, so that, that was their motivation there. Uh, but if there's a new direction from the committee, we're oh. certainly I just don't know. I just want to get the right well, first thing. Research the programs. Yeah, first we have to figure out what are we trying to do here. And we are trying to not only support homeless services, but it also the reason we do uh, the, these is because it prevents panhandling in places where you have a lot of panhandling. If we want to raise money for charities generally, well, let's find another place that makes more sense. I mean, here you're really going to address the issue of panhandling and, and you discourage panhandling in certain areas by saying, hey, instead of me giving this, this money directly to this person who may or may not use it for their basic needs. I have a, a meter here who I know it could go directly to a charity that's going to use it in a good way that's going to service homeless individuals right. even better. So I, I think raising money for charities is good, but if we are going to do it through this method, we're really destroying a great opportunity on, on the purpose of why we want to start this in the beginning. But I, what's the law against, uh, do we enforce the law against panhandling? We are no. restricted by several state cases right um, I just think there's a you know uh, 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 the angel fund you know where it goes to humanitarian needs I don't know and then some of it goes to the social service agencies that reach out and then they too for traffic mr. Rosendahl many people are now panhandling whether it's on off ramps or uh, on ramps but also uh, on street corners and walking into the streets which uh, is scary because of the traffic safety issue I'm 100% before it. I just think we've got to think of a word that markets it, that it does well, that it gets that. It may be, uh, I, well, it will come to us tomorrow. Well, why don't we keep it as homeless now and yeah. if we could think of something else, let's, let's do that. But right now to just uh, ad hocly put in a name there and take this program in a whole different direction, we're taking away from a great opportunity to address several right. issues. Um, you know, the name was 
on uh, Grand Avenue before was Grand Avenue. Was it Weezer Avenue? No, 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 no. Sanchez is over here. <laughs> we met Mr. Sanchez. That was a special man who we met on Sanchez Alley. Uh, there used to be Faith, Hope, and Charity. Faith, Hope, and Charity. Grand Avenue was Charity. And they petitioned, they petitioned the city council. I just want to let you know, Mr. Rowe, they petitioned the council to change the name because when they said where'd you live, people didn't like it and say they lived on Charity. So they changed the name of Grand. <laughs> All right, so keep it homeless for now until we make a better analysis. All right, let me okay. just relax a little bit because I think the schedule as well. Um, are we all in favor of what we're just saying here? As yeah. 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 Just for clarification, um, the existing motion is to reuse old parking meters as homeless donation meters. Um, and Councilman Labonge discussed a different option. Um, I just wanted to make sure that this is... Well, I think we should look at it, Mr. Weasel. I think everything's going swipe. Why people, why you swipe is you can't have a, a pocket full of quarters anymore to run a meter, yeah, so you swipe your card. Yeah, th so the department's um, initial approach would be to research the existing programs and then identify the steps required to implement yeah. such a program uh, or for such a program to be implemented and the associated costs. And you could um, do a, the pros and cons of doing other social service organizations and not just homeless. I mean, you could identify pros and cons of doing that, but the main focus should be on homeless. I, I believe, yeah, our, our technical expertise here would be providing the costs associated with, with decommissioning, decommissioning these old meters so that they could be repurposed for that, for, for charitable use. Um, advising on the different charities that would be eligible, I, I would we'll do that. council We're direction for that. for right now. <laughs> okay. But I just want to make sure I understand it. If you go to the meters that are swiped, doesn't it take you away from the use of the old meters? If we went to using swipe meters, You'd that would that would involve either the city purchasing those meters or the city seeking out a, a donation of those yeah. meters or a sponsorship for those meters. I believe Denver actually has um, has folks sponsor the, the purchase of those meters. I mean, if we're using old meters, yeah. we could decommission those uh, address our security concerns and turn those over to perhaps a, a, a non-profit that could that could manage that program and distribute the money. So that those would be two different approaches. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure we weren't getting away from the motion. Right. The motion talks about decommissioning and using old meters, and if you go to swiping, you're buying new meters, which defeats the purpose of collecting the money. So I just want to make sure we're consistent. That's my concern as well. So yeah. if, if there's a direction from the committee that we, we um, kind of focus this on reusing the old meters, I think that was the initial yeah. point. That is um, the focus, but if you should leave an option if private businesses want to put in new swipe meters, because they've been done in Denver, I believe. That is an option, but that's not the city putting in the money for the swipe meters. But I like both of those points. So I, this, I would just say this. I think uh, it, it should be made available. And then if uh, it's because these are salvage meters, right? They're heads over in, uh, in, in the Piper Tech, right? They're just sitting in a big box. The so old you, ones would be yes. If so we white, make it available. Why don't we? It's because you don't want to. Do we want to pay to do this? We want to try to make it for the community to no, do it. The swipe meters aren't in the box. They're I know that. Right. But at the same time, we could say to the organization, the Midnight Mission, Midnight Mission, we're going to give you this meter. Here's what it costs you to install it. You could have it, and they're going to put quarters into it. Or if you want to call Riley uh, Meter of uh, Canton, Ohio, which makes the meters, for how much does the meter cost? Uh, approximately $400. $400 for a swipe meter? For the, for the mechanism, yes. For a swipe meter? I don't know. I'm just saying if the, our goal is to get money to help people, more people will swipe than have quarters. So I think it's a great idea that we should look at look at what Mr. Weezer said and Mr. Park said, but I just have a friendly amendment. Also see if there's an option for new technology if we encourage someone to put a swipe meter in, off the street so it doesn't confuse people for the parking, but also in a public area that they could contribute to other people's benefits. Fine. So moved as a friendly amendment. Uh, it's good yeah. on this. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? Unanimous on that. I'm going to go back to item three. I apologize. There were two public comment cards in item three. Uh, they'll remember what we said in item three uh, before, but I apologize for that. And come on up. Uh, 
Edward, no, no, the person, is that from Mr. Cardenas' office? Did you want to speak on this? Yes. Okay, and we'd also like Glenn Bailey to speak on this. He pulled out a card for this. Okay, and as you know, the action by the committee, which will be withdrawn until we, we have your comments, uh, says continue the motion and instruct the Department of Transportation to report back on parking utilization and alternatives to better manage parking. That was the recommendation by DOT. Uh, no offense to, to my colleague, but uh, please comment, both of you, on this, because Mr. Bailey is in for the proposal, and obviously you are for the proposal. Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Bailey, you want to go first? Yeah, my, my comments are really quick. Um, two streets, one is Sylvan, which is uh, where Van Nuys City Hall is, the fire station across the street, and the Browdy Constituent Service Center. Um, having this parking meter time until 8 p.m. has had a chilling effect on uh, public participation at these public meetings that go on, particularly at Browdy Center. It's inconvenient. People have to leave every hour to feed the meters. And so, and there's not a lot of retail right there. So putting the time back to 6 p.m., which is before most of the public meetings start, would be a good thing. And then also on Calvert Street, and these are both the east side of Van Nuys Boulevard, Calvert Street's where the State Building Auditorium is, and there's a lot of public meetings held there as well. And so the same thing for evening meetings. Um, and there's no commercial right there. And I'm only talking about those two streets. I'm not commenting on the rest of, that you have before you. Lastly, Saturdays are also an important time of civic engagement uh, for these venues. And so if there could be the same, on the, for the same reason, the same argument of exempting Saturdays on these two blocks to allow folks to uh, be able to conveniently, we had a training for neighborhood councils there for, for the Valley in October, and people were leaving every hour during the train to go feed the meter. It was kind of crazy. But, um, and the state building, Parking lot is not open on the weekends. So anyway, those, that's my two cents. Hi, Eddie Martinez, uh, Planning Deputy for Councilman Cardenas. Good afternoon to you all. I'm actually kind of surprised that DOT would want to continue this item. Uh, we actually met already and we've been emailing back and forth regarding this motion. Uh, Councilman Cardenas introduced this motion to actually, as Mr. Bailey just said, to help out uh, constituents when they come to their uh, you know, community hearings or community meetings in the evening time. Uh, the majority of the reason why we did it is because we wanted to help revitalize Van Nuys Boulevard. This is just a tool to allow us to encourage people to participate in evening dining in the area. If you go there right now in the evening time, it's completely a ghost town. This is not going to help this exactly, but it will actually help out in regards to our efforts to revitalize uh, the economy in the area. And also LAPD has their uh, Tuesday uh, written test there uh, several times a month throughout the entire year. Uh, so I would wanted to see if perhaps we can continue with this, with this motion, not to, not to be disabled to a DLT, uh, if we did come to a compromise where we would actually reduce the target area from Gilmore Street to Calvert instead of from Van Owen to Calvert Street. We're comfortable with that. Uh, we hope that perhaps we can uh, have the vote on this motion right now, if uh, Dan will be willing to come in and work with me on this one. It seems rather compelling what he's saying about going out there feeding the meter all the time. Yeah, that's true. The new meters, how often do we fill them? Could you comment on that for the floor? Sure. Dan Mitchell, Department of Transportation. Um, so the motion includes some 52 blocks as stated. I, I believe it was if, if it's scaled back to Gilmore, that removes one, two, six blocks from that. Uh, there were two blocks that were identified in public comment around the Civic Center. Um, and uh, we have looked at the utilization there after 6 p.m., and that's very little. In the overall area, our, an, our initial investigation has shown uh, that there are some blocks that are used significantly. Um, there are nine blocks in this area that are utilized between 6 and 9 p.m., just based on the payments. We haven't looked at the, the actual occupancy, um, but that are paid 20 to 40 percent of the time in that area. Um, so um, the department's recommendation is that we try less drastic measures to help improve parking utilization. Um, if, if the existing restrictions, for example, most of Van Nuys Boulevard is one hour time limit, um, and that may not fit very well for the evening hours, so we could look at uh, perhaps extending that to two hours consistent with what we've done downtown in our Express Park project. 
Um, also, this area was included at the request of the council office in our demand-based pricing uh, ordinance. So another option is to reduce the rates if that's appropriate in the evening hours. Um, so the department's recommendation would be to take those steps uh, to better regulate parking prior to rolling it back completely um, and, and having uh, no regulations at all after 6 p.m. Uh, as the council members may recall, the council acted in 2008. The mayor and the council directed us to extend meter hours to 8 p.m. throughout the city. Um, some of the blocks in Van Nuys uh, do still end at 6 p.m. Uh, east of the Civic Center area, but these, um, most of the ones in the motion go to 8. Hey, Mr. Park. No, I was just going to say just exactly what you said, but the new technology, you have the ability to alter the park. And with the new technology, you also can, uh, in the sense of uh, the hours, I mean, you can expand the hours so people aren't going out every hour. I'd hate to see after all that we've done on meters, particularly now that special parking revenue fund has turned into a supplement to the budget, to start finding ways not to have revenue. And so I would suggest those first two that you're talking about before you roll back and say no uh, usage during those hours, but do the demand base and also the extended hours. And if they have the new meters, it seems like it's even more compatible for people to use. That all sounds right to me. Do you want to say anything? Well, I think it's uh, important to look at it in a whole picture because I just noticed in my district on Largemont, you have meters that operate to 8 on weekends to 10, which I got. But then the off-street parking lot is 7 a.m. To, to midnight, which is crazy. So I think it has to be studied and then do the right thing, work with the council office. And I, I think it's important to go that way because we have taken a strong step this way. Uh, but usually you come up with a solution whether it's 6 o'clock or not, which is, uh, you know, makes sense to me sometimes. Congressman's uh, deputy, uh, you feel good about this, what we just, just talked about? You know, uh, the councilman really wanted to have the reduction of hours because we've been actually uh, approached by several businesses as well as the council members, as a uh, number of council members. And again, it's just part of a tool for us to utilize to just encourage the area to be more visited in the, in the evening times. Uh, if DOT would be willing to introduce very uh, discounted rates after uh, 6 p.m., that's something that we would con highly consider. Uh, again, our, our, our choice would be to have the hours reduced until 6 p.m. There's parts of uh, uh, North Hollywood along Lancashire Boulevard that have had a huge explosion of um, restaurants and, and housing, and their hours are, are until 6 p.m. So we want to pretty much emulate what they have over there and hopefully have the same success as them. Okay, so do you guys need to talk through or do you accept part of the amendment? We'll be able to at least take those particular blocks that it's mentioning and work with us. Look, you're going to be a member of the House of Representatives, and if you're coming back to this district, I expect them to be chair of the Budget Committee when, when that day changes in D.C. So even more important for all of us that we have a happy congressman who will represent the area on many different issues. Can you coordinate with him on that and do that? Certainly, the department's recommendation would be to come back and, and bring a set of solutions to help address the parking management in this area. Yeah. And we'd specifically address those blocks on Sylvan and on Calvert uh, that were mentioned in public comment uh, to deal with. Uh, and recently, we pulled meters out of the 15th district in San Pedro. You studied that, though, before you did it. So I think it needs to be a thorough study, then come back with a recommendation, work with the office, but study it, because you have to think about what you're doing. Okay, all those in favor, as we have just discussed it, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, unanimous for the committee, and the committee is now four. Mr. Perez has left the room. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item. That brings us to item number five on the agenda, which is a Krikorian Biscayano motion requesting the city attorney to prepare an ordinance to exempt from the 6,000 pound gross weight restriction on streets with such limits, vehicles owned owned by um, media companies and that transport broadcast and communications equipment licensed by the FCC. Uh, it is being suggested, colleague, that this is to be referred to the Public Works Committee. Please, Mr. City Attorney. Yeah, uh, as currently worded, the City Attorney has real concerns. It's, it's overly broad, as written right now. It, you're, 
you would want a department, a Bureau of Trans or a Bureau of Engineering study to determine whether those roads, and to specifically narrow down those roads. Right now, it's 6,000, every road that's 6,000 pounds, but that's most of the residential areas in the hills, which are not direct routes to the other side of the hill. I, my understanding of this motion is that they want to do it because some of the news outlets in the San Fernando Valley have a difficult time covering events on the other side of the hill and getting there at the same time that the other outlets that are on the other side. That, but you, you feel we should refer this to Public Works Committee? You should refer it to Public Works Committee, but I would also encourage <coughs> uh, the council member who introduced it to narrow this bill down. I, I have had discussions with Council Member Gregorian's office, and I believe that their intent was to limit it to vehicles that were 7,500 pounds. But there's there's some issues there, but it should be referred to the public works. Okay. And so that can be worked out at that point. Yes. You have re mentioned that to, uh, to Mr. Please, okay. Uh, we, we move forward with that. Do we have support of everybody here to attend the public works with those stipulations made by our city? Can do that? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? John White, City Clerk. Um, committee members, to refer this to Public Works, you'll need an okay from the Council President's Office. And I'll work with your staff. We'll, we'll work that. on that. Yeah, we'll work, we'll work on that. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all very much for that. Next item is skip. item number six. Levon Garcetti. Oh. Oh. I think we need to skip to seven and eight because we have some members who are leaving. If we could do that, Mr. Chair? Sure. Okay. Item number seven and eight, we want to take those together. The first one is a Laban design motion instructing DOT and the police department to report relative to traffic safety awareness programs that can be implemented to address quality of life issues. And item number eight is a Laban Rosendahl motion directing DOT and the police and fire departments to report relative to safety issues posed by vehicles blocking intersections. Of course, we always believe safety is our number one issue in this great city of ours. So you're asking for approval of the motion. Do I have a, a mo uh, somebody to second that? I'll, I'll start with it. Yeah, OK. Uh, good. Mr. Park. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, that's right. And, and Mr. Weasel. Yes. OK, unanimous on, on Just a friendly amendment on that, too. I'd like to work with uh, departments for the public information that's so important. And also, do we realize, uh, all of the colleagues here, that there's no driver's training in high school anymore? Terrible. You know that? Flat nothing. And I think uh, that adds to some of the challenges we have. So we'd like to work together and come up with a traffic safety public campaign. The old show, Highway Patrol, you can start walking, Bernard. You're, you're ready to walk, I know. Remember the old show, Barbara Crawford, Highway Patrol? Oh, be on your time. I love you, Bernard, for that one. Broderick would say this, Billy, in his voice. Leave your blood at the, uh, uh, at the Red Cross, not on the highway. Thank you very much, Mr. Slipper. All right. All those in favor, <laughs> by saying aye. 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 Just, uh, unanimous, the four of us, and we have one more left, which is what? Motion number six. Hey, Brian. Item number six is a LaBange Garcetti motion authorizing and instructing DOT with the planning department to prepare a parking study for the historic Larchmont Boulevard. Terrific. Any comments or discussion? You're okay, right? Daniel. Look at it. Do a little study. Yeah. Okay, it's on consent from Mr. Parks. Yeah, super. Uh, Mr. Weezer. Yes. Okay, you for it? How about you? Yeah. I put the motion in there. I know he did. So <laughs> it's call. unanimous by the committee of right. four uh, to approve uh, item number six. So six, Good. seven, and eight have been approved. Obviously, two was. I want to thank Mr. Yeah. Bailey again for his insight into his neighborhood council. Congratulations yeah. again for being yeah. president of it. Yeah. Right. Hey, Brian, wait a minute, Brian. So moved. So Pauline, moved. wait. Thank you, Mr. Parks. All those in favor, unanimous. The meeting is adjourned.